Two PC setups. We've started building streaming PCs. We're gonna build more. In fact, uh, the next video later this week on this channel is gonna be another PC build. And by the way, spoiler, sure, why not? Uh, we built a $40 PC and it, and it worked. It was a $40 streaming PC, so you know. Sub to the channel if you wanna see that later this week. But setting up two PC setups almost definitely takes way longer than just building the PC itself. Wanting to get your audio and video with optimal performance and quality while also not wanting to shell out hundreds of dollars for equipment. So in this video, I'm gonna give you everything you need to know about transferring your gaming footage from your gaming PC over to your streaming PC, getting that video signal from one PC to the next, because there are three different methods of doing that. I'll go over all three methods, how to set up each one of them, the advantages and disadvantages of each one, and why people choose them, and, and ultimately try to make the decision for you of what you should use, make that decision really easy for you. And by the way, in another video in the future, maybe a week or two, I'll be doing another video about setting up audio and transferring that from PC to PC and, and the different methods of doing that. Welcome back to the Alpha Gaming Channel. My name is Harris Heller. I am your stream doctor. And after today, hopefully the thought of setting up a two PC setup won't make you want to kill yourself. Am I allowed to say that on the internet? Before I get started, I want to remind you that I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. Link to that down in the description below. So if you have any questions about this kind of stuff or just want to talk general ideas, feel free to pop into the chat. Also, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and uh, hit the sub button if you want to see any of these other future videos that I'm talking about. Cool. Moving on. I mentioned before that there are three main methods of capturing your gameplay with your streaming PC. Two of those involve capture cards and the last one is NDI. We'll go into what all that means. I've used all three methods over extended periods of time. They're all very different and give different results. So after I explain them to you, it should be pretty clear which one you should wanna use on your setup. But let's go ahead and just jump right into what's objectively known as the best option. And I, I will explain why it is the best. The very first one is the mirror method. This is where your gaming PC has two cables coming out of the GPU, whatever display port or HDMI, whatever you feel like. One of them goes into your gaming PC. One of them goes into the capture card of a streaming PC. And what you're doing is you're mirroring your gameplay scene over into the capture card. Essentially, your computer thinks that the capture card is another monitor and you're sending the same signal to both monitors. I don't know why I'm doing like hand signals. I'm probably gonna ask Sam to like draw something on the screen, so I don't need to to do that. I'm gonna stop doing that. It's super simple. The capture card sees the exact same thing as your gaming monitor. This makes it incredibly easy to set up and it makes the load on your gaming PC negligible because your GPU only has to output one video signal just duplicated two times. Duplicated once, duplicated twice, whatever. You know what I mean, duplicated to two screens. So. Let's go set it up. You're gonna connect to both monitors. And by the way, I'm calling the capture card a monitor because that's what your gaming PC is gonna see it as. It's gonna think it's another monitor. You're gonna go into your monitor settings, which is, for most of you, it's in the NVIDIA control panel. You're gonna click set up multiple displays. You're gonna right click on your main gaming monitor and you're gonna go to clone with, and then you're gonna click on your second monitor. That's it, you're done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You are set up. Now on your streaming PC and OBS, you add a video source, you add your capture card, and it picks up everything that your gaming monitor shows. It really seems like this should be the solution that everyone uses, but there are reasons why some people don't. And let's go into that because you might be one of those people. Not only do you need to own a capture card, which is gonna cost over $100, but you also need to make sure that you have a capture card that can run the same resolution or greater than your monitor. Because you're mirroring your screen, the resolution on both screens needs to be exactly the same, and you're going to be limited to whatever the lower resolution is. This means if you've got one of the more common capture cards, like an HD60S or even an HD60 Pro, but you're gaming on a 1440p 144 hertz monitor, that monitor is going to be downscaled to 1080p. So for gamers that have a higher end monitor, you're going to be required to have a higher end or, or at least a newer capture card. It doesn't necessarily have to capture in 4K like Elgato's and Avermedia's 4K PC 
PCIe capture cards do. It just has to have the pass-through resolution of whatever you're trying to use. For example, both Avermedia and Razer have 1080p capture cards that have 4K 60 frames per second pass-through. And that can also do 1440p 144 hertz pass-through. But let's move to method two, because let's say you're gaming on a 1440p 144 hertz monitor and you are stuck with a 1080p capture card what do you do? Method two is the preview method. This is where you set up your gaming monitor and your capture card as two separate screens. You launch OBS on your gaming PC, you right click on your preview window, you go to full screen preview, and you choose your second monitor. That second monitor, of course, being your capture card. This will display your game plan on both screens, but because the capture card is only seeing the preview window of OBS, it can be stretched out to fit whatever resolution the capture card is at. The downside to this is one, you still have to buy a capture card, and two, now there are two points of failure in terms of quality on your stream. Depending on how much power you have, capturing and previewing your gameplay adds a huge load to your PC. This can result in either lower frame rate in game or probably more commonly dropped frames on that preview you're sending to the capture card, which means that even if your streaming PC isn't dropping any frames, your gameplay is still gonna look super choppy because the preview you sent over looks super choppy. Your gaming PC is dropping render frames in its version of OBS. So here are a couple tips. One, make sure you use game capture and not display capture. Seriously, game capture uses considerably fewer resources. Two, make sure the preview window inside the OBS app itself is disabled. Running a preview window adds a pretty hefty load to your PC. Turning that off is gonna save you a good chunk of frames. So it will work if you're running an old capture card and haven't had the money to upgrade your capture card yet but you can see where the disadvantages lie here. So let's move on to number three, the NDI method. Let's say you're running a pretty budget rig, you haven't had the cash yet to buy a capture card and everybody's telling you to use NDI. First of all, what does NDI even mean? NDI in a nutshell is basically when you're sending your video signal over your ethernet connection instead of through HDMI. As long as both of your PCs are on the same local network, you can do this. How it works is you'll first need to install the OBS NDI plugin on both PCs. Link to that in the description down below. Just like method two, you'll need to run OBS on your gaming PC and capture your gameplay. Then you'll go to the tools menu, click NDI output settings. You're gonna name your gaming PC where it says output name and you're gonna click enable NDI output. Now on your streaming PC, you'll see NDI source as a new option for when adding a source to your scene. Choose that, then find the PC that you named and you're set to go. This option is awesome because it's free, so anybody who's just starting a two PC setup can kind of get used to it using NDI. However, everything else is pretty much a drawback. <laughs> Not only do you have most of the problems that you had in method two because you still have to capture the gameplay in OBS on your gaming PC, the one advantage being you don't have to preview it. You can turn off the entire preview window and that's, that's not gonna take up any resources. But also using NDI, you are going to lose a little bit of image quality. I'm sure you'll notice when I go from capture card to NDI here, the footage looks a little bit choppier, the colors aren't quite as deep, and it's pretty clear to see that there's a fair bit of delay between the gaming PC and the streaming PC, which can put your reaction on stream a little bit out of sync with your gameplay when something crazy happens. Check it out in this clip here back when I used to stream using NDI. Where are they? Oh! No. <laughs> But that's it with the three different methods. The main differentiating factor between the three of them is mostly budget. If you have the budget to buy a capture card that has the pass-through rate just as high as your monitor, go with method one, it's by far the best. If you're running an old capture card and it can't handle what your monitor can, use method two. If you don't have a capture card, you can't afford one anytime soon, use method three. And that's that's pretty much it. I hope this cleared everything up. I know a lot of you are gonna say in the comments, well, what about going into the input of your capture card then using the output of the capture card to go back to your monitor? That's there for console gamers who can't use more than one monitor. Almost every single gaming PC has more than one monitor output. There's zero reason to do that unless you're on console. But that's pretty much it. I hope this answered your questions. Again, as a reminder, I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday evening, twitch.tv slash Harris Heller. And if you have any questions about this kind of stuff, feel free to jump into the Discord. There's an amazing, huge, community in there of people looking to collaborate, looking to find people, looking to talk about these methods and what's worked best for them. Link to that down in the description below as well. And as always, happy streaming guys. I cannot believe this. I hit this every time. I never miss.